Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're reviewing for you Prince of Persia The Lost Crown on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the superb PJ O'Reilly and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Way back in 1989, Jordan Mechner's original Prince of Persia represented one of the first and best examples of what's become known as the cinematic platformer. It's a traditionally challenging genre, one that combines strong art, fun storylines, and fluidly animated protagonists to bring us adventures that test reflexes and puzzling abilities to their limits. You know the sort of thing, you know, like Flashback, Another World, the classics! Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is the latest rebirth of sorts for that franchise, following on from the sands of time and 2008's Prince of Persia revamp, one that takes the established lore of past entries and ditches them in favour of a tangentially related new lead character and a bit of role-switching fun. Yes, this brand new tale sees you playing as Sargon, a member of the Immortals, who are the sort of crime-fighting hero types, and a man who meets all the criteria required of a bona fide action hero. In the opening moments of The Lost Crown, our new swashbuckler finds himself on a mission to rescue the actual Prince of Persia <laughs> at the same time that he's betrayed and left floundering at the bottom of a pit. It's a spectacular fall from grace for Sargon, he's been proper framed by some right slags as PJ puts it, and one that results in a constantly compelling and wonderfully well-crafted slice of platforming action from the maestros at Ubisoft Montpellier. Of course, with these devs of the range, the same team behind the phenomenal Rayman series, we had a feeling that this would end up being a bit of a belter, and we've only gone and been proven right. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown serves up roughly 20 fantastic hours of puzzle platforming, and even more if you're a completionist, that brings kinetic action and satisfying, crunchy, responsive combat. It's got tip-top environmental design, which is par for the course with Ubisoft Montpellier, let's face it, and a supremely clever melding of time-based powers, acrobatic skills, and puzzles that gently stretch that grey matter you've got between your ears that is slowly wasting away. This team knows how to make a super clever and extra stylish platformer, and it shows in every moment spent exploring and battling right here, giving us a new story and protagonist, whilst also ensuring some nice ties to the past for fans, allows the series to reset its stall somewhat, to step back from the excess of the bigger 3D entries to a more traditional viewpoint. This is a return to the core principles of 1989's original, and puts gameplay, constant challenge, and immaculately crafted platforming front and center. The Lost Crown also brings some core changes to the mix though, with Metroidvania-style backtracking and map studying now a bigger part of the overall experience, a change that adds replay in spades. It's genuinely emotional at points, especially if you're old enough to remember the first game clearly, as so often the Lost Crown perfectly replicates the magical flow of the original Prince of Persia. In terms of vibes, the game nails the atmosphere and attitude of that first adventure, whilst delivering a game that reveals how slick, pretty, and clever modern platformers have become. As Sargon embarks upon a tale that takes him through lush forests across sandy deserts, the rooftop of great Persian temples, and beyond, you'll be picking up a whole bevy of skills and powers that transform Sargon from dab hand hero to reality shifting manipulator of time itself. Now, we could detail all these skills and powers here, but we'd ruin a lot of the fun of progression and just discovering the secrets and abilities for yourself, so we're not gonna. Abilities that are drip fed to you at just the right time to keep the core gameplay loop from getting stale. You'll know the general drill anyway, especially if you've been indulging in the likes of Dead Cells, Metroid Dread, or even Dark Souls to name a few recent examples. There's a lot of Dead Cells here in particular in terms of just how much tweaking you can do with boons and boosts, and the good old bonfire mechanics of From Software have also made their way into yet another game. On its default difficulty, the menagerie of skeleton schools and other monstrosities keeps you on your toes with tight parry-based combat. There are some fantastically colourful boss fights dotted along the way as well. Each new location looks great, even if they maybe lack a little bit of originality in places, and the world is packed full of secrets, lore, collectibles, and shortcuts that open up new paths and routes through an enormous Swiss cheese warren of a world map. 
We even get a dip into full-on horror at one point as Sargon makes his way through dark, damp caves that do a fantastic job of highlighting the atmospheric soundtrack. Oh, and if you remember those stealthy insta-kill Emmy bits from Metroid Dread, well, <laughs> it's, they're, they're kind of in this as well. It all feels great, nothing comes off as extraneous, and what's been pilfered has been adapted to fit it beautifully. So we've got smooth and responsive combat, fancy specials and finishers to reward perfect parries, pixel-perfect platforming, slick parkour, and clever gauntlets that test all of your accumulated skills. We've also got plenty of challenge in the form of time challenges and tougher routes for better rewards and better secrets. However, one of the most impressive aspects is how The Lost Crown gives fans of challenging platformers exactly what they want, to the point of almost feeling cruel at higher difficulties, whilst also delivering a ton of smart accessibility options that bust the genre wide open to newcomers. The headline new mechanic in this regard is the Memory Shard ability, which allows you to press down on your d-pad to take what is essentially a screenshot that's automatically added to your location on your map. It's so simple, it's so brilliant, and we suppose it's a natural progression of the screenshot functions found in later Assassin's Creed games. With the ability to tag puzzles or treasures in this way, or simply mark a route that you don't have the skills to traverse right now, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown makes it easy as pie to keep tabs on everything. We've also got the game's amulets, which function a lot like the charms from Hollow Knight. Collectible items that tweak and boost all manner of aspects of gameplay, such as attack power, max health, whilst also giving you new moves like flashy dodge dodges, exploding enemies, and more. Then, on top of all of this, a comprehensive accessibility menu allows players to turn on a clever platform assist mechanic that warps you past tricky sections, as well as giving you HUD scaling, a high contrast mode, target assistance, and sliders for damage input and output. You can even change dodge windows, parry timings, and how fast Athra, which is like a, a, a meter that fills up to do special attacks, is accumulated. It is just, it's choose your own adventure indeed. This all results in a Prince of Persia game that pays its due respects to the past by taking the fundamentals of the original and fully modernizing them. The fact that it does this whilst also addressing many of the main issues some folk have with this genre, i.e. the crazy difficulty, is just the icing on top. The difficulty is there should you want it, let's be absolutely clear about that, but newcomers or those in search of something a little bit more relaxing will find plenty to enjoy as well. Let's hope this serves as the starting point for a brand new series because we are absolutely down for more. On a final note, and perhaps most importantly for the Switch version of the game, we've had very few issues with Prince of Persia The Lost Crown in terms of its performance. It looks fantastically bright and colourful in both docked and handheld modes, which are at 1080p and 720p respectively, and plays at 60 frames a second across the board, so big wins all round. We also happen to be playing the Series X version alongside this one, and you can check out the pure Xbox review in the description below, and the graphical differences are slight to say the least. It may lack a little fancy lighting or shadows here and there, but this is a very pretty game, especially on the console's handheld screen. Performance isn't 100% perfect, there are some slight stutters when moving into new areas. Thankfully these transitions never involve gameplay and the jitters are short-lived and very minor. And some non-transitional cutscenes also had a few hiccups here and there. Beyond this, some extra loading screens are the only other change we notice between the two versions. It's a very tasty Switch port and a game that rockets to very near the top of our essential action platformers list. 2024 is kicking off in style. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is a slick return to the roots of this franchise that serves up clever 2.5D action wrapped up in a delightful art style and a satisfying story. There's a smart balance here between old school levels of action and challenge, moorish combat and neat puzzles, all mixed in with accessibility options and fine tuning that opens things up to newcomers and casual players alike. We knew Ubisoft Montpellier was a safe pair of hands and this team has not let us down, serving up the first must-play of 2024 in a Switch port that absolutely does the business. You've reached the end of the review, that means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts, and I think this is an absolutely flippin' excellent game. I haven't played nearly as much as I would have liked, just other commitments here and there, but it's absolutely wonderful. Mechanically, I almost can't fault it. It is fantastic. 
The only criticism I do have is that the dialogue and the voice acting direction is a little bit laboured at points. It, it doesn't really feel very natural. This may entirely be because I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 recently, but you know, I, I, I've, I give my opinions as they happen, baby. Sargon's a great main character, he's so much fun to control as well, and it just oozes style, you know? It, I mean, you know what I've been seeing in the video, the game just looks so stylish. I think it looks great, it plays great, it feels great, the challenge is really there if you're looking for it. Yeah, honestly, this is, a, I don't want to say it's better than I thought, because I thought it was going to be good, but it surpassed my expectations even then. It's a really flipping good time. It, it's really a good...